Welcome to the Unshielded Podcast, where we explore the importance of rational privacy through the application of data protection and zero-knowledge technology. Welcome. We are at the Midnight Summit uh, doing Unshielded Podcast here with the one and only Charles Hoskinson. Thanks for joining us today. It's good to be back on. Wonderful. Well, we are looking forward to talking with you today a little bit around the Midnight Roadmap. Uh, you had a great day yesterday presenting that sharing that in a, a vision here for the next uh, few years in regards to where Midnight's going to be going, um, shared a little bit of story where it's at. So let's talk about how we got here. Talk about, you know, how the idea came about, share with a little bit of background of where that started and how Midnight came to be. Well, I mean, there's always been a need in the industry for privacy. It was more of a question of how do you achieve it? Do you achieve it with a public blockchain that's completely transparent and then some sort of off-chain solution like multi-party computation or trusted execution environments? Or do you try to pull the privacy primitives into the blockchain itself? Um, you know, the irony is everything that's old is new again. So the very first uh, cryptocurrencies or proto-cryptocurrencies pre-Bitcoin, things like uh, DigiCash from David Chom, they, have, they actually had privacy with them. <laughs> but you need a central actor to kind of reconcile it. So there, there's always been a desire since the 80s or 90s to create some sort of system that preserves and protects people's privacy. Uh, so the first generation systems were things like ZeroCoin and uh, Zcash and Monero and these things, and they all had different primitives like ring signatures or kind of very primitive snarks or these things. The challenge is not programmable. And, and so we always knew that it wasn't good enough just to embrace a snark system. You needed to have private smart contracts. But then the minute you have that, you you inherit all these difficult questions about selective disclosure, the balancing of a public state and a private state system, and also how do you do this in a scalable way? Because typically when you, you get this stuff and you actually embrace it, you have like a thousand X to 10,000 X transactional cost. So in 2018, uh, we were at Eurocrypt and we had a lot of discussions about what would be needed to make something like this work. And then in 2019, we started a program and uh, it's been about six years in earnest working really, really hard to actually get the components of Midnight built. Then there was this open question of like, how do you launch something like this? You know, because it's not good enough just launch a layer one. That's what Aleo did or any of these other people do. Uh, it doesn't typically succeed uh, no matter how good the technology or people are because the network effects are so sticky. So we, we kind of had two halves to the project. One half was really obsessed and worried about making privacy work at scale for everyone everywhere. But then the other half of the project was how do you integrate this into the legacy, into the DeFi world, the cooperative economics component of it. Uh, so that took a, a little bit of time, about two years to kind of figure out a good strategy of how to do intents and capacity exchange and multi-chain signatures, um, this glacier drop distribution to all the different people and uh, the bridging mechanisms and, and, and so forth. And we're about, I'd say, 75% of conceptually through all those components. And we, what's nice is the way we laid out the roadmap, we got to kind of get to build that systematically. Yeah, beautiful. So yeah, you, you bring up the, the roadmap, I think. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, building up to this for the last couple of years, bringing, uh, midnight to market a couple of years ago. I think it was, uh, uh, Scott's fest that you kind of talked mm -hmm. about, uh, initially. And so if you talk a little about uh, where we're at with the, um, phases that you have proposed, I think initial phase we're kind of in the midst of with what you talked about, the cooperative economics and the tokenomics model. Um, and I think so far, I think, uh, what we've seen from the community is, uh, that glacier drop that you talked about, the, the distribution model has been going fantastically. And I think we've seen, you know, 4.5 billion tokens claimed, um, by the end of this scavenger mine, which is happening, you know, pretty soon here. And then also being able to then, um, get that out into market being liquid. So talk a little bit about where we're at right now and what are the next couple of phases that we can expect over the course of the year. Yeah, so uh, it was a big bet, the Glacier Drop. I always wanted to do some form of a large-scale airdrop. It's funny, I, I had dinner years ago with Silvio McCauley before he launched Algorand, and I said, you know, you guys should be like the MIT of Bitcoin and uh, and make Algorand like the, the next generation chain and just airdrop to the Bitcoin distribution. He's like, no, 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 you can't do that. So we, we went back and forth. And so I've been talking for probably almost nine years about how to do something like that. 
But you know what we wanted to do is bring a little bit of everybody. So you have an airdrop mechanism, a proof of work mechanism, and then a kind of a lost and found for people that come afterwards the, after the chain launches. Uh, and what that allowed us to do is get a very large distribution base. You know, eight different ecosystems, seven blockchains, well over a million participants, I think. Uh, so it's actually this year going to be the largest population new coin uh, that's that's launched. And so it gave everybody a, an incentive to care, everybody an incentive to take care of it. But that also it all avoided the ICO mania and it avoided the VC distributions that typically plague the space as a whole. You know, the game that people play is you get insider tokens to, you know, special rich people. They get it and then they dump on retail. And that only works a few times and retail starts getting smart about it. Uh, and they get disgusted with the whole thing. So you've seen a lot of lackluster institutional launches. So you'll see like the usual suspects, A16Z or Coinbase or Pentera or something, raise hundreds of millions of dollars and uh, they'll put it to a project, the project launches, and then very quickly you have rapid decline in price and it doesn't recover. Uh, so that, that has everything to do with the distribution of the tokenomics. Uh, so if you have a fair launch where everybody's given right of first refusal, uh, then you have a situation where everybody who's there wants to be there and everybody's there. Uh, they, they don't have this urge to sell the token at a certain price point to recover investments for their LPs uh, so they can get their 2X or 5X. Uh, just like Bitcoin's original distribution, you get a, a much better culture inside that curve. Uh, so uh, we were pleasantly surprised, especially on the scavenger hunt in 20 days of mining. Uh, it's equivalent to two and a half years of Bitcoin mining. You know, so from the first two years, you know, 2009, 2010, a little bit of 11. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of lessons we've learned from it. And, you know, if we could do it all over again, we probably would have refined it a little bit more. But it was such a radical experiment to pull all these different pieces together. And what people don't understand is actually a second tranche for the Glacier Drop, you know, Kraken distributing and Gate distributing. So the exchanges are also distributing to their customers as well. So they'll get a huge wave of people from that. So between the exchange distributions, the glacier drop distribution, scavenger hunt, it's just a colossal amount of users have come in. But then, you know, you got to launch it. And so December 8th uh, is going to be Hilo, the, the first generation of it. And I, I said in my speech, there's like four gates you have to go through. So the first is liquidity. Get the token out, get it liquid, get it listed on exchanges, eventually tier one exchanges. It takes a little bit of time, but maybe 30 to 60 days to really fully realize that. And then the next stage is to turn on the federated mainnet so that you can responsibly move over all the people that have been building on the test net. And there's a lot of partners. You guys have done a phenomenal job with uh, hackathons and the partner development. Uh, and then once that's running, the next stage is get all the operators over. So get all the stake pools over that want to run the network, get them trained up, fork into the permanent consensus protocol Joltian. And then once that's done, then you tie it all together into one coherent end-to-end -end system that's fully decentralized and also has all the bridging infrastructure start working with the other ecosystems like Ethereum and Solana and Avalanche and so forth. Uh, so normally this would take years and years and years, but we're actually going to try to get it all done in nine months, which is pretty extraordinary if you think about it. Absolutely. Very ambitious. And I think uh, a testament to all the work that's gone in over yeah. the years to get to this point. So um, yeah, fantastic. We're really excited for that, uh, be able to present that to community. I think the sentiment that you gave too around um, being able to distribute the way we have as we're hearing over the course of the summit is people are really excited to now have that in their hands, feel like that was the right way to do it. And they're energized even by the mechanism of how they can participate, not only to be onboarded into the community, but with the, the night token distribution as well. So I think that we see that momentum coming into all of these phases of the, the next uh, piece of the roadmap. So um, we look to continue that momentum for sure. So as people are considering, maybe this is the first time they're hearing about it. Maybe uh, the night token is now being listed and they're hearing this podcast for first time. Um, what are, what are the things that people should be excited for, uh, in the future as we get to, you know, that decentralized mainnet that, um, you're excited for as well? Well, I mean, the first step is to go to midnight.network and, and just kind of wayfind through. And there's going to, there already is a discord. My goal is to try to get to a million people in that discord. So we're going to have to do a lot of work to make that happen. Um, but it, the thing is that once you join the discord and you go to midnight.network, you can see there's a lot you can do. You know, there's, we need developers, we need ambassadors, you know, we want, we want people to talk about hybrid applications. So what does midnight mean for Ethereum? What does midnight mean for Solana? What does midnight mean for Cardano? Every ecosystem 
system has um, some nuances and customization that's required. But the overall mission is we just want to give people their privacy back. You know, this concept of freedom of association, commerce, and expression, we want to wake up every day and be really obsessed with putting the user and the DAP developer in the driver's seat about what data is private and what's public and keep it secure. Uh, and that's just such a fundamental thing these days in an age of generative AI where you have digital twins copying everything. I would just think about it for a second. Take a moment. You're going to work for a company. They're going to record everything you do. And then you're going to wake up one day and there's a digital version of you at that company. And they're like, we don't need you anymore. We have the digital version of you and we own it. So anyway, thanks for all your programming knowledge or thanks for your lovely voice or you know, thanks for all your musical creativity. But the AI is doing a pretty good job of replicating you now. So we, and we don't have to pay it. You know, it's just computation fees. That's what happens when you don't own your own data at the most extreme form. So everybody's starting to feel that and everybody's starting to get a little worried, which is why privacy coins are surging. It's why people are getting very concerned. Uh, so it, it's it's something where it's not optional anymore. It has to be turned on by default. So you have to have a system that doesn't say, hey, move all your users and your money over to us, change out your token to us. You have to have a system that's like Switzerland. It's neutral to everybody. You know, so you can bring your Ether and bring your Bitcoin and bring your ADA. And you have to have a system that work with legacy systems at the same time, like the fabrics and, uh, and the traditional open banking infrastructure. So, you know, if you're interested and you come from some wake of life, it could be healthcare and medical records, it can be supply chains, whatever, just go to midnight.network, spend some time there, learn the technology, and then talk about what problem you have that needs a solution, where this is not a solution in search of a problem. This is 10,000 problems looking for a unified solution to make it easy and accessible. Uh, and our goal is to pull all the threads together. You know, and Midnight is a colossally challenging project. Um, it's the most advanced thing we are, we've ever done. Talk about like multi-resource consensus and post-quantum folding schemes and all this stuff. And bridging all the cryptocurrencies is a very hard thing to do. Uh, but in that ambition, if we get it right, we make privacy simple and easy for the masses. And we make selective disclosure simple and easy for every business, every institution, and every government. Uh, in, in that mission, if we pull it off, it's going to fundamentally change the world. Beautiful said. Well, thank you very much, Charles. Uh, we really uh, appreciate you having on the podcast today. You know, if privacy matters to you, come join Charles, come join myself, come join the rest of the Midnight community uh, and see what we can do here for uh, blockchain over the next course of the few, next few months. So really excited. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. If you found this episode valuable, be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to follow us on social media for more insights on blockchain, decentralized finance, and the technologies shaping the future of Web3.